This is what a curfew looks like in the capital of the world's most powerful nation. Police, the National Guard and the FBI had cordoned off almost every downtown block, using every tool at their disposal. But they couldn't stop hordes of protesters roaming the city. Even before the lockdown, there were clashes and chaos. Well, clearly authorities are taking much more of a no-tolerance approach tonight, but even before the curfew comes into place, it's clear these protesters don't care. Everybody's not here to be violent, but it's going to get violent tonight. That's what's going to happen. A Channel 7 news crew was live to air when they were hit by riot police. Exactly what it looks like. We're just standing safely. Amelia! Oh. Whoa. Um, oh. Amelia, can you hear us? Amelia, are you OK? Another angle captured what happened. Now there's just a lot of violence erupting. This is what they do when you stand up. This. No one was violent today, only them. No one shot anything but them. They assaulted us for no reason. Then it became apparent why everyone was being moved out with such urgency. Press, let's go. Press, come on. Guys, we gotta go. The area was needed for a presidential photo opportunity. With Bible in hand, Donald Trump posed for the cameras. Well, it's pretty extraordinary that the President of the United States has been wandering around just behind this barricade and just around the corner trying to project an image of control, when on this side of the police line there is sheer defiance, even after the curfew has come into play. OK, thank you very much. His backdrop, an historic church visited by every president since 1812, was targeted the night before. Somebody busted open a door and actually got into the nursery and uh, lit that all up. As fires burned metres from the White House front gates... There's definitely a fire here. This is the parish office. The president was rushed into the bunker for safety. There were stern words for state governors when he woke the next morning. And the whole world was laughing. You have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time. They're going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerks. And later, from the Rose Garden, amid sounds of the chaos outside... A warning he's prepared to stamp down much harder with military might if required. If a city or a state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. An ominous threat that fell on deaf ears. Despite the threat of military deployment and the National Guard being out in force, there is still a lot of tension on the streets, including this incident from Buffalo in the state of New York and a warning it is confronting. The driver of an SUV sped through a line of police late at night. Oh, ah. oh. Two officers were injured. Local authorities say both are now in a stable condition. The driver and passengers of the car have been taken into custody. North America correspondent David Lipson joins us now. David, what's been the response since Donald Trump spoke today? Juanita, just before dawn here in Washington, D.C., and all is quiet, remarkably quiet, considering the scenes just a few hours ago. No protesters on the streets, no law enforcement on the streets. And in the meantime, the authorities have put up, you may be able to see over this shoulder, a ring of steel, a big black fence uh, that is a semi-permanent structure around the park next to the White House. Clearly they are hoping that that will deter any further protests today. Over this shoulder you may be able to see that historic church that was visited by Donald Trump yesterday uh, just after the crowd of peaceful protesters were dispersed with chemical irritant and flashbangs and the like. Among those in the crowd were the clergy of this particular church who were here holding a prayer vigil 
and handing out water and the like to the peaceful protesters at that time. They are not happy about the fact that they were forced out of their own church so the president could use it as a backdrop with a Bible in hand.